That's cute, huh? <laughs> I made that. Um, hey, it's Michelle Fox, and my husband is painting the bedroom, so I was displaced, and I thought I would go ahead and do my makeup in my office, and I thought, let's uh, go ahead and do it on a video. I don't know. I guess I'm that full of myself. <laughs> But I know that um, generally speaking, people really enjoy any kind of makeup tutorial. So I thought I would just do that and chat with you about a couple of things that are coming up that are really super cool. And sometimes a video gets people's attention more so than a post. So I've already um, done uh, my moisturizer, my eye cream, my eye primer and my foundation, pretty much all of the, the moist stuff. I'm putting on my um, concealer and then I'll do some translucent powder. But uh, so how's everybody doing? So it's Sunday afternoon, it's super duper sunny and it looks warmish, but uh, it can be really deceiving in this area. I'm in West Michigan, uh, but I heard that it's supposed to be in the 50s this week, which is nuts. That is like so, nice and we had so much snow you know toward the second half of february and to have that just be gone is <laughs> so cool like you get so much and you think it's never going to be gone it will never can't possibly ever be gone <laughs> and then it's gone in like a couple of days it's just crazy so the sponges that i'm using are mini sponges that's kind of self-obvious but uh they were part of a limited edition item but they're just perfect for getting right up near your eyes like up in the corner of your eyes and one thing you know when you see limited edition um products if you have any interest at all snag them all you can because when they're gone they're gone and these you know at first i kind of was like oh i don't know what would i do with them and then when i figured out what i wanted to do with them you know i've, I've used them every day since uh, something that I thought I would show you about translucent powder. I open it up and then I tap it into the lid. I've probably shown you that before. I don't think I have it open all the way. Um, rather than, um, you know, tipping it upside down or shaking it. I don't know how other people do it. But whenever I do this, like in front of somebody, they're like, oh, that's different. So I just like tap a little bit in there because you don't need a ton. And I dip my, my big fluffy brush straight in there, tap off the excess. And since I, I'm not done with my look right now, the reason I'm using translucent powder is more to set my foundation and to take some of the shine off. It's a, it's a funny thing because I want my face to be luminous and dewy and to kind of have to retain moisture, but I don't want it to look shiny. I don't want it to look oily or to reflect, you know, too much light. So, um, so I like to use this and I use sort of a pressing motion so that it's really setting the foundation and it's going to take some of the shine off. I don't do it under my eyes. I don't like powder under my eyes because then that's going to make that area look more dry and that's going to really accentuate the crepiness, which that's never good, never good for me. Younger people don't have to worry about that so much, but, um, you know, once you hit late 30s that <laughs> you want to rethink that and then i'll use this again at the end more as a finishing powder so right now i'm using it sort of like as a setting powder so our translucent loose powder is a sheer powder so it's um fine for all skin tones and it can be used both as a setting powder or as a finishing powder all right so we'll set that aside so i've been doing my eyes all different ways and I recently have been doing a lot of dark colors and I don't think I really clean my brushes super well. So I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but uh, I've been really trying to learn how to do <laughs> uh, false eyelashes, which if you've been watching me, you're probably like, yeah, I know it ain't working. <laughs> uh, but I figure, you know, you gotta learn somehow. So I put it on and, and you know how I try to be real. So I, I yes, I have been, on videos with my ridiculous eyelashes. But um, once in a while, I would say one out of three attempts looks okay. And it usually has to do with this, this first part right here. I can't get that to look natural. Like I either, I either get it or I really, really, really don't. <laughs> Where that part is like kind of coming out and it just looks terrible. But okay, so I've already primed my eyes and I'm taking a light matte shade. I like to use biscotti. And I'm going to go under my brow. Can you still see me? Yeah. 
And so I, I pat that in because I like to use quite a bit of my highlight. And then I'm also going to, because I feel like I've not been getting it. Um, I've been so much focusing on that little area that I am not getting enough of it all the way across. So I don't want a lot of it all the way across, but I need enough to blend. So I'm kind of feathering that, you know, all across the, that whole top area. But the concentration is under the first, you know, probably third of my brow. And I still have quite a bit on the brush. So I'm just going to flip it over and see if I have enough. And again, I'm, I'm patting it or tapping it in the area that I want the most deposited. And then I'm sort of feathering it in the area that I just want, just sort of a wash of color, but I do feel like I need a little bit more. Pat that. It's interesting how the different motions and the, um, the size of your brush, the density of the bristles, all of those things really do make a difference. And I, I've never seen anybody else do this or teach on this, but I always like to have my light color just sort of um, all along this inner area here. I think it, I, I, otherwise it just kind of looks shadowy to me. And maybe it, that has to do with my eye shape. Ooh, that's such a nice segue. Uh, so this Thursday on my VIP page, I'm going to do um, a little tutorial or a discussion on eye shape and how that impacts how you apply your makeup and, you know, kind of help you figure out what shape your eyes are and give you some tips. I, I know that I used to feel like I'm not going to remember that diagram, you know, and I'm not going to keep that diagram with me forever. But I think if you understand the concept like if you understand what part of your eye you're trying to push back and what part of your eye you're trying to bring forward, you'll just you'll remember that. And then when you remember the, the principle, then you don't have to memorize the chart. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's that's the goal. So then this middle, um, I'm going to use sort of a long tapered sort of loose brush. And I want to put my mid-tone on, but I want it like just sort of a nice, Again, sort of a wash of color in that whole center area. And so I'm not super, what color do I use? I think I'll use Dusty Rose. Um, I'm not super particular about how this, you know, where this lands exactly. I just let the brush do the thinking for me and just go back and forth. And normally because, you know, my eyes are older and crepey, a back and forth motion is not even doable for me. But because this is looser, uh, it, it's uh, it's just a different. Like if this were a tighter, smaller head, then no, it would be like, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I would and it would skip. But because this is a softer, looser bristle brush, I can do this motion. And then I also kind of like wiggle it around to make sure that uh, there aren't any bare patches. And it's fascinating to me. That, that even though you would think that it would be like equally wide in here as it is out here, somehow that brush knows to be a little bit wider out here than it is right here. Don't you like, doesn't it look like that? Like it, I don't know, man. It just has to do with how the brush, that's why it's a tapered um, design. That's what, that's what that is. And that always intrigues me. I think that is the coolest thing ever. Okay. Yeah, I do like to talk. <laughs> So we've got the Thursday thing about eye shape coming up and then Saturday. So a week from yesterday, um, I've got a separate page or group. It's not a page. It's a group. We've got a group on Facebook called Partying Pink, and you can join it if you request an invitation. Uh, and we're doing um, sort of a St. Patrick's Day eye color tutorial. Super pretty with gold and greens moss green emerald green gold status and biscotti so if you're not part of that group and that sounds like a fun thing we um have prizes and games and drawings and uh, we're gonna have two giveaways during the live and then one afterward for people that watch the replay so that is gonna be super fun and it 
I've said this before in my makeup tutorials that I always, um, since I, if I put my mirror like right here, then I can't see you and I feel like you can't see me. So I have it off to the side. And I think that's why my eyes, I always have more on this side than on this side. But, and my pride won't let me just leave that alone. So then I have to go back and fidget. Oh, one more. Indulge me. Okay. So this is a maneuver that I've been doing a lot. And uh, it's kind of newish. I have talked about it, but it's when you take a, a brush with like a pretty compact head. And I think I'm going to start out with a mid tone shade. I'm not going to use that pink, probably use hazelnut. It'll be something darker. I'll use cinnabar. And you go right in the crease. We usually talk about going higher than your crease to give your eyes some lift, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're actually going to go right in that orbital bone indentation. You can feel it, you know, with your finger. We are going to use, you know, that small compact head to get the product right in there. I'm just following that actual crease. You see what I'm saying? Starting from the outside and coming in this way. And this cinnabar is darker than a mid-tone. It's more of an accent color. So, so far I've used a highlight biscotti. It's a matte. And then I use dusty rose as a light wash, sort of a, a mid-tone, but also a transition color. This cinnabar I'm putting right in my crease. And it's dark enough to be an accent. For dark-complected uh, people, it would be more of a mid-tone. Okay, and then once I have that in the crease, because my eyes are droopy, they kind of point down, I'm going to want this end part to keep um, working itself up, working its way up. So like that color, I want that to work, um, move, oops, I didn't take my, I didn't turn my volume off over there, sorry. So I started out in the crease, exactly in the crease. That's where the concentration of color is. I'm not adding any color, but I'm taking this brush and now I'm sort of feathering that color up because I do pretty much always <laughs> want color to be higher because I want it to lift my eye visually. And then whereas that other brush just sort of of its own nature, you know, went wider out here and skinnier in there. Now I've got to do that. I have to be cognizant of that. So now this time I'm I'm making an effort to do that. So I'm going a little bit higher out here. And then the closer I get to my nose, the narrower, narrower I'm making that path. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me get a little, let me get my magnified mirror and see how things are looking. All right, I'll do it on the other side. And I, a few t t tutorials ago, um, I said how for me lately, it's like the more colors I use, the easier it's been, which is so odd because normally, you know, when I see um, like a page in a catalog and it says, you know, that they use and they list like, you know, seven shades, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, who, who in the world does it? But uh, it's more forgiving because usually each shade, you're, you're doing sort of a little step with each shade. So it's very incremental. And uh, so then if you make a mistake in, you know, step two, then step three can kind of cover it up. Um, whereas if you've only got like two or three shades and you make a big mistake and you're using dark colors, sometimes you have to just start all over again. And I just, it, yeah, like yesterday I had to do that. <laughs> I kept trying to fix it. You know, when you, uh, you're you just being stubborn and you just keep doing it over and over thinking one of these times it's just going to look better. And I just kept going over it and over it. And it was just getting darker and worse and nastier. And then I just had to take it all off and start over. So like, yeah, it's just not happening. And then I get angry. <laughs> Uh, at who? I don't know. I guess me. Uh, at being so silly to take all that time. I do that with um, like crafts and stuff, which is why I'm not, I don't craft. 
<laughs> if I have like, if I'm cutting something and it's ever so slightly uneven, you know, I'll keep cutting it and cutting it and cutting it until there's like hardly anything left. That is me. Instead of like getting out some kind of straight edge or something. Okay. So we've got those done. And um, I still, oh, this, this eye, this eye is droopier than that eye. I was actually taking pictures of my, my naked eyes today wanting to send them to my doctor and say is this normal because <laughs> i have one that is so much droopier than the other and it's troubling but i have a feeling she'll say yes such things happen as we age oh, i probably went too high and then sometimes I'll do my brows before I do my eye color, and that helps too. I didn't do that today. I've just been all willy-nilly lately, just kind of doing th things different. Variety, the spice of life. Okay. Oh, my husband is saying stuff, so he probably forgets that I'm on video, so I apologize in advance for whatever he might say. <laughs> I'm adding a little more biscotti because I feel like I kind of um, took some of it off. And one thing that um, like if so this side, I feel like I got so much of it off and then I kind of went with the darker color a little bit too high. So rather than trying to take off the darker color, yada, yada, I'll just try to do the same on this side. It's like, it's, it's a game. It's a dance. <laughs> That's why, you know, when, when people get frustrated when I do appointments and they're like, I just can't do it. Like you can do it. And like, nobody, nobody just gets it right out of the gate. You know, it's just constantly, you know, working with it and tweaking it. And, you know, at, at some point you just say it's good enough. All right. So I'm going to do a dark color and I'm going to use like kind of a compact head. It's a little bit bigger than the one I just used. And we'll go a little bit darker than cinnabar. I think I will use mahogany. And this is kind of a fun trick. I'm going to use a dot that's higher, so like the highest point that I want it to go. So I'll go like maybe right here. Maybe a little higher. So I'm using mahogany, which is another matte. So far, everything that I've used has been matte. So there's quite a bit of color on the brush, and I'm putting a dot of that color right there. It's funny how, um, depending like how much you flex your eyes and stuff, when you relax it, you know what you think is high is not really that high. So sometimes I have to change it up. Boy, my eyes are, they've always been droopy. I used to say they're like Rocky Bubble eyes, but um, now they're droopy and hooded with age. So it's like, it's uh, it's been interesting. Okay, so I've got my dots on there. And then I take a wider, um, uh, it's not super loosely bristled. It's more of like an all over eye brush, a little bit wider. Let me make sure I don't have anything super dark on there. And then I'm gonna like kind of feather this out, sort of in a circular motion. But in my brain, I'm thinking I want this to sort of be like a like an outer V. So I, I have a strategy. I'm sort of bringing it along the same path that I had the mid tone, but then I'm also bringing it down toward my lashes. So I'm taking that little dot and using this brush to take that that. Um, that sort of like that little pile of pigment and massage that in such a way that it's um, creating that that um, outer V effect. Isn't that clever? I didn't come up with that. But it's the way to get that outer V with a dark color without it being too harsh. You know, sometimes when I use the, the, um, the brush, you know, the tight brush and actually make a V, it's, it's a little bit too much. So this is like, it's just right. So it's perfect for people that are just starting using, you know, a darker color or a third color. Um, you know, a lot of people have never gone darker than a mid-tone, darker than like a hazelnut or something. And this again is mahogany. So these are all 
browns except the the dusty pink that was just kind of a fun little thing to throw in there i don't know if i have any lip gloss over here to dig out a sample oh, i think i have my red oh that'll be pretty okay i feel like it's looking a little patchy let me let me zoom in And I am going to put on my false eyelashes in front of you. So if nothing else, it'll be entertaining. Uh, I take my biggest, uh, my widest fluffy brush. I keep this clean. And then I just use it to kind of blend the, you know, the variety of colors together. But I don't go out this way. I pretty much just stay in this inner area. Because I want that concentration of color to stay there. I've got a different technique for that area. I'm using this brush to blend out here. And then I take my foundation brush, which I I've applied my foundation with the brush. And so there's always a little bit of foundation still on there. And so what I like to do with this is I clean up that outer edge with this. And I like doing it like this because this is moist. So it's not going to dry, you know, this area. And it gives me like a clean line without it being so crisp that it looks fake and weird. So this is, um, I just really like, you know, doing it like that. Okay, I better get my brows on because they just are really looking weird to me. And I love our brow liner, outliner, definer. I think we call it, it's precision brow liner, I think is what it's called. Where is it? Here it is. Okay. What I love about it is that the tip is so skinny that you can really have realistic hair like strokes and that's the whole that's the key and so the uh, ideal way to do your brows is to underline the shape of your brow so you're just you know very easily just lining you know just like you're coloring you know making a coloring book page but you're just going along the bottom of your brow And then when you go back up to the front area, you're just going to, um, you're not gonna color that in fully. You're just going to start making like hair-like um, little flex, little strokes. So we have to be aware that we don't want to just color that in like a little, you know, like a little oval is too much. Then it looks overdone and it looks, and it looks fake. And then you keep doing the little, hair like strokes throughout the rest of your brow. And if you can manage it, when you get to the end, if you can kind of flick it up a little bit, that also helps to lift, lift your eyes. So at the very end, instead of like it coming straight down, just kind of give it just a little bit of lift. Then that is more flattering. And this is brunette. I forever and ever and ever I use dark blonde because when I used brunette, it was so dark. But I think that was because I was just pretty much coloring that whole puppy in. <laughs> I was not using the correct technique. And I'm still not, you know, I'm not a pro. But uh, I think I'm getting better. And I used to uh, do my brows just for the heck of it and now I really have to they um, are really patchy but in different ways like one is patchy in this area and then the other one's like bare over on the end isn't that fun and we have an awesome brow tint but I'm almost out and I'm not going to bother breaking wide with that but what that does is it can tame your brows like the brow hairs it can tame them in place but it also adds fibers so that it can thicken them and just give them a little more volume. So it's really nice for me in those patchy areas. 
And again, for that, I'm able to use brunette, which in the past, you know, anything brunette was like, like jet black practically. Okay, trying to look and see how. The other thing that's really weird to me is like how you're supposed to line it up, you know, so that like your brow starts like where your eye thing starts. Well, my eyes are wacky. Like my, I've got one eye that's a little bit lower than the other one. <laughs> so even that little little trick, you know, doesn't always get it just right. Uh, so, at, you know, like I said, at some point, you just have to say, good enough, right? I guess to me, you know, the whole makeup thing, like, I definitely think it enhances our beauty, but primarily I, I enjoy it. Like I like working with colors. I like learning the different effects. You know, I'm fascinated by the, um, you know, the, the dark and the light and how that impacts, you know, how your face looks. I just think that's so interesting, but I by no means think that a woman has to have a face full of makeup to be beautiful. I do not think that. Okay, I am going to put mascara on my lower lashes. Gosh, I'm so bad at using this one. I'm not going to use this one. Um, because even though I'm going to use the false eyelashes, I was doing the falsies on top and then nothing on the bottom. But because I wear glasses, a lot of times all you can see is under, you know, just the bottom. And it just looks like so boring. So I'm not doing that anymore. Change my mind. So this is Lash Love Lengthening. And I'm almost at the end of this one, too. Even I have to buy my stuff. I have to replenish my makeup drawer. My bottom lashes are, like, invisible. I don't know if... I mean, I look at some people and they have the, like super long bottom lashes and I don't know if that's 100% mascara or if some people actually have, you know, lashes that you can see with your naked eye. Because <laughs> I definitely don't. Never did. And I'll put a little bit of powder liner probably at the very end. On my lashes. I notice that if I have a lot of powder um, right on the rims of my eyes, then when I try to do my false eyelashes, they, they struggle. I'm already making a mess on here, but oh well. We'll clean it up. So this eye, I used to um, pull out the lashes and they never came back, the bottom area. I don't know if it was a nervous habit or if it itched or what but they don't come back anymore. Okay. I think I'm going to put a little bit in this front area. My favorite false eyelashes are the ones that are just in the outer corner because I think they, I like them to look dramatic. Like I don't want them to look like, you know, exactly the same as my regular lashes, but at the same time, I don't want them over the top. And the ones that are in that outer corner just seem like they blend, you know, a little more easily. So I'm going to put some mascara on my lashes toward the beginning. Does that make sense? Oh, I need another tissue. I do have another exciting thing to tell you about, but I'm going to wait till I don't have to concentrate so hard. I can tell you that when I need my cheeks because that's an easy thing to do. So Lash Love Lengthening Mascara. This is one of my faves. We have, we have five different kinds. I use them all. But what I like about this is a thinner consistency. So it's super easy to apply, super easy to take off. And um, easy to apply, easy to take off. It lengthens, it grabs every lash. It's natural looking. It's more about um, making sure that every lash is visible and covered more so than you know that it looks really thick and dramatic but it's still just a really beautiful look okay this is not our product this is a magnetic eyeliner thing so this has nothing to do with anything 
Okay. And I'm really bad at this. Why I'm doing this on video, I don't know. I want to get really good at it. I think that's why. No. And then, doesn't it kill you when you watch somebody and they're like, oh, I'm so, oh, I'm so bad at this. And they like do it and you're just like, it's perfection. I think I was watching, you know, a few people like um, influencers do, uh, you know, practice on magnetic lashes. Oh my God. And every single one of them is like, oh, I don't know. I haven't used, a, you know, I haven't used this kind of liner in so long. And they all just look like amazing. Oy vey. All right, so this has iron oxide in it. It has kind of a strong smell. Um, so this liner actually is the magnetic thing that the line that the magnetic eye or lashes cling to. Isn't that wild? Yeah, okay, close enough. Good enough, whatever. So um, so the first issue was I don't ever, ever use this kind of eyeliner. Then I had to kind of get over the smell. <laughs> because <laughs> it smells kind of crazy it smells strong but everything that i've read said that it's you know safe and this particular one is supposed to be um you know not all natural but like use ingredients that are i don't know they use such verbiage like you would think that it's like really good for you as good as iron oxides could be <laughs> i don't know i think about that but when you see how the um, little magnety lashes click on, you're gonna go, ah, oh, because that part's really cool. Okay, this eye is so hard to get. That's where I wish I was ambidextrous. And then I do try to get a little flick at the end. And that's what they're so good at. They like make it look, you know, they just have that perfect swoosh it just looks so cool. I just look like I'm trying too hard. All right. Let's see if they're the same. Well, the good part is that when you put the lashes on, you can't really tell. And you don't see all of this. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. That's a big thing. You have to let it dry really, really well. All right, on to this little interesting thing. So the way that we are told to do our blush lately is to focus on the apple of our cheek. But I was watching another YouTuber really young. She was like probably in her twenties even. And it was so funny because she was saying the other day I put my, my belt blush on and I started up here and came down this way and I didn't come all the way. And I went along my cheekbone and it looked so good. It really lifted my face. And I'm like, that's totally how we did it, you know, in the 80s, 90s, you know, early 2000s. They start up here and you just come down, you know, come down that cheekbone. And she was like all about it, just saying, oh, my gosh, it just, you know, it made me look so much better. It just lifted my whole face. So lately I've been doing that, even though, you know, most people still talk about the, you know, the apple of the cheek thing. I'm like, yeah, it does look good. That's why we did it for so long. <laughs> But, um, and so with that concept, you start back here. So the concentration is back here and it gets less, you know, the closer you get with the whole apple of the cheek philosophy, you've got, you know, the concentration of it, you know, right here. So it's a, a quite a different look and, you know, I've done it both ways and, uh, I don't have great cheekbones. So there's not really one way that I'm like, oh, you know, that's amazing. That's the one. So I don't know. What do you think? What to um what's your technique? I don't know if you guys can hear the ding dong all the time, but I keep getting these little notifications that I should have turned off. Oh well. Just not at the top of my game today. So that was a combination of desert rose and wine berry. That's another thing I do is I tend to combine stuff. And I want to do. I like to do a really light powder as my highlight along the top. 
And this is a limited edition powder from years ago that you can't get. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you about it. But I just like the powder more so because it's um, this powder is matte. We have a powder. We have a powder highlight in our lineup. And because my face, um, I don't know, I just feel don't feel like I have a whole lot of space, you know, between the fullness of my cheeks and my nose. I really try to make sure that this is cleaned up in here. So I'll put a little bit of highlighter even in that area. And then I use it again to get any shine off my nose. But I blow my nose so much that doesn't really matter anyway. All right, my eyes do look kind of goofy. Yeah, I need to like come across that way. But see, see, this is me correcting the cuts in my, my craft. Then I'll go back and I'll do that. And then that won't be right. And then I'll do it again. I'll do it again. And I'll have liner like all the way up to here. <laughs> That's what I do. Okay. I saw that I had my red lip gloss over here somewhere. What did I do with it? Oh, here we go. This is so pretty and it really lasts a long time. This is just a little sample and I've been using the sample for a few days. Uh, red, it's called Iconic Red. But it, um, like this color, I put it on and it lasts for hours. It's amazing. I think this has, it's a little bit of a cooler red. Um, the, uh, Red that we had before, rack and red, was more of either a true neutral red leaning toward warm. But this is, I think, a little cooler. And believe it or not, like that's not a real thick, heavy schmear. It's just kind of a modest amount. And it stays on pretty well. All right, I think that's done. I think I have a fuzz on my lip. All right. And like I said, I always go over it. Like I take my big fluffy brush that has the translucent powder, kind of clean everything up. Oh, and I forgot to tell you about the other cool thing. So um, on Wednesday, so today is Sunday, if you're watching me live, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, um, there's a, a super cool opportunity for you to hear about Mary Kay as a side gig from one of my one of my superiors. And uh, there's a free gift involved if you wanted to listen. And the reason why it's so cool is because right now, Mary Kay has a really neat, um, super affordable way to start a business completely online. And... So anyway, if you listen to it live, then you get a free mascara. And if that is something that you want to chat with me about, then send me a private message and we can do that. Okay, let's see. Here we go. This is the real McCoy. So these have like little magnets on them. There's like a little um, thingamajiggy that you can use to apply this, you know, to like a little holder thing. but. Oh, I'm still, I'm still pretty, I'm not all the way dry yet. Oh, I'm just putting it on anyway. So just kind of lay it on there. And the magnet just like is attracted to that liner. Jack magic. And what's really cool, like I don't know if you've ever tried, um, the kind that you use glue with or whatever, but once that glue touches your skin, you, it's unlikely or it's very difficult to move it. But this, since it's a magnet, you know, you can slide it down a little bit. And if the um, if the liner is is perfectly dry, you can take it off and reposition it completely. But if it's a little bit wet like this, then it's kind of gummy. And then that doesn't really, that doesn't work so well. But... All right, let me get that all in there. 
this might be one of my better days. <gasps> Exciting. Yeah. So you see, that's pretty easy, huh? Uh, uh, I feel like I have a patent or something. Hmm, I don't know what that is. All right. That looks good, eh? Does, does it? <laughs> Let me see. So one thing that's uh, kind of a bummer is that you can see my liner job. So like I do have to make sure I, I have to get better at that. But what a lot of people do is after they put this on, then they'll go back with like a liquid liner, you know, like our liquid liner and do it again. But um, that's just a crapshoot for me. <laughs> it might look better. It might look worse. Uh, I'm trying. I get like an A for effort, I think. So here's my lash. And you just kind of lay it on your real lash. And it just is drawn right to it. So it kind of is helping you. It's guiding itself. Heat-seeking missile. It's very cool. And also, so I've been doing this since Christmas. And I've never, ever had one, like, fall off or, you know, hit, like, it, when I'm outside, like, it hasn't, like, blown off in the wind or anything like that. So the magnetic uh, property, the magnetic whatever the heck, you know, lasts all day. I hope it looks good on camera. Looks good to me. I just wish that I had a better liner thing. So yeah, so here's my struggle. It's like right in here. Like I can't quite get that to look like normal people like it's kind of lifting up a little bit maybe i need to pull it over i think i'm asking for trouble <laughs> so i think there's a way that you can go back in um you know with a liquid liner and perfect that but yeah i won't put you through that but i will make you watch me do this i will take I'll go darker even than the mahogany. I'll take some hot fudge. And then I'll go back underneath. I warned you I was going to do that. Go back underneath to line that. Just to kind of make it a little more cohesive, bring everything together. And because like I said, when people see me with my glasses, they can't always see the top of my eye and the bottom just looks so plain and boring. And then I've got to work some of that color up into that corner so that I don't have a bare spot. And if that's not enough color for you, then, you know, you would use black. You would use something like onyx, which I, I was doing that. Then I started feeling like I just looked a little too, a little too dramatic for daytime. So, yeah, so this is still kind of a, a work in progress, but it's been fun. My new my new thing is kind of like um, I just want to have fun. You know what I mean? Like I just want to try things. I don't want to be afraid of things. I don't want to be intimidated. Uh, I just want to, you know, life is short. You know what I'm saying? So so what if I've got an eyelash flipping like this? <laughs> so all right, so that's that. So that was fun. Okay, my makeup's done. So let's review. So on Saturday coming up, what's the first opportunity for you? No, your first opportunity would be Wednesday, 6.30, to listen about Mary Kay as a side gig. Then the next opportunity would be Thursday on my VIP page to talk with me about eye shape. That is at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Then Saturday, 1030, that one is on Partying Pink, which is a separate group, but anybody's invited. So just let me know that you want an invite. And that's where we're going to do the gold and green eyeshadow look. And I can even send you samples if you're interested. And we've got prizes involved with that. So a lot going on. I like to stay busy. So thanks for your time. 
And uh, if you see anything that you want to try, even like with this look, I have samples for all of this as well, except the magnetic uh, lashes. <laughs> and these are from Amazon. And they've got like, they go under three different names, like Luxilia. Um, okay, Luxilia. And then there's one with an A. And then, and Zanessa. It's all the same, the same stuff. But they just have three different names. Zanessa, Luxilia. And then there's one with an A. I can't think of it though. Anyway, I'll put it in the comments. Alrighty. So that's it. I got to go do groceries now. The fun never ends. I got an exciting life. All right, see, see, oh, that's coming up a little bit, isn't it? No, it's an optical illusion. Yeah, something you're right. <laughs> All right, have a great day and uh, um, just enjoy your Sunday. I hope it's as sunny as it is where you are, as it is where I am. Thanks so much.